A man in yellow polka dot pajamas suddenly wakes up in a strange white room with no windows or doors. Where is he? How did he get here? Who locked him in? Will he ever be allowed to leave? At the same time, in a small Mexican town, a wrestler nicknamed the Snail Man is preparing to step into the ring for the most important match of his career. The two events are more connected than anyone thought. Hello everyone, this is Recap Movie Hub. Today I'm going to tell you about the movie Symbol. In a huge white room with no windows and doors, an Asian man, dressed in funny pajamas, reminiscent of a clown's outfit, wakes up. He sees a strange lever on one of the walls and presses it, after which a multitude of small angels appear in the room. The angels quickly disappear, leaving buttons on the wall that look like little human pickles. The man realizes that each button summons some object. He begins to press them and gets different things. So, the man gets a horn, a bonsai tree, and a big pot, and even a huge vase. He realizes that if you press the same button all the time, you get more certain items. So, the man gets a whole bunch of chopsticks. However, when the guy misses and presses a random button, he gets hit in the leg with a cart that came straight out of the wall. The man curses and presses another button, summoning a strange object that resembles a butt out of the wall. From there, a nasty gas sprays right into the man's face. More and more objects appear in the room. Stuffed toys, a tape recorder, a pink balloon, a mask, a plunger, and even a chaise long. The man tosses the balloon at one of the buttons and gets sushi, but missing the soy sauce. After pushing the button again, he only gets an extra portion of sushi and is forced to eat it without the sauce. However, after the man eats the sushi, he presses the button and gets the soy sauce. Later, 3D glasses fall out of the wall, which the man puts on and sees an angel pointing to one of the buttons, which he hopes is the exit. As he presses the button, a huge butt appears from the ceiling and knocks him down with stinking gas. Some more time passes. The man finds an interesting manga. He reads the fifth part already and really wants a sequel, but there's no way around it. He presses various buttons and suddenly a door appears, which immediately closes. The man has forgotten which button he pressed and begins to press all the buttons, which leads to the appearance of the Aborigine, who quickly disappears into the wall. Then, water starts pouring over the man's head, and when he finds the right button, the door comes down too fast, and he doesn't have time to get to it. The man realizes that the door only goes up when the lever is down. He tries to run to the door, but it doesn't work. The man used various objects to extend his arm and push the button, but nothing worked. Even a large vase didn't help hold the button. The man decides to fill it with water, but it only flows on his head, no matter where he is standing. The guy tries to squeeze his wet clothes into the vase, but it's clearly not enough. There is only enough water to water the bonsai tree. Then our hero fills the vase with sushi, but now it's too heavy, and his hand won't fit inside either. In desperation, he starts pulling the sushi out with chopsticks, which takes a long time. When he moved the vase to the center of the room, he forgot which button opens the door and accidentally called out the aborigine who broke the vase. Then he tried gluing the button with rice and fish porridge, but that didn't work. Then the hero tries to tape it down, but nothing works. The lever still beats up. The man presses various buttons and suddenly a rope appears from the ceiling on which he was able to fly to the door, but behind it there is another door with a keyhole. Our hero miraculously manages to make it back into the room before the first door goes down. Nevertheless, he gets a painful kick in the back. In anger, the man kicks some button and then the key appears, but he does not have time to retrieve it. When he comes back, he can't remember which button he pressed. He presses one, he presses another, but instead of a key, dogs crawl out of the wall and start barking at him. Eventually, one of the buttons called out the right key. The man came up with a cunning plan. He put a piece of fish on that button, and he grabbed hold of the rope, swung around, and fell. Then he noticed a plunger and used it to push the right combination of buttons. He opened the door with the key, but saw another lock on top, and it was coded. In a rage, the man threw the plunger, but suddenly a native appeared with numbers on his forehead. Seven, nine, four. The man entered these numbers on the second lock, but the first door came down. He tries to open the second one, but the size of the door does not allow him to do so. 
Our hero finds himself trapped in a small room where he desperately asks for help, crying and remembering the past days he spent in confinement, how he built a huge tower, walked a toy dog, tried on clothes, played, read books. We realize that our hero has been in this strange room for a very long time. Suddenly, some breeze blows. He opens a side door and finds himself in a long hallway that leads to another room where everything happens all over again. The angels reappear and leave their levers, but now the room is dark and the man screams in despair. In another storyline, we are introduced to a nun who is driving her car through the mountains and listening to Mexican radio. A rosary with a cross on it is swinging on the mirror. In the next scene, we are introduced to another strange character, a man wearing a snail mask who is sitting at a table reading a newspaper. A car arrives behind him, driven by the very same nun. It turns out to be his daughter, Karen. She is taking her father to a competition. The man wants to talk to her about life, but she is a terrible driver and swears at other drivers. Snail Man prepares for battle by saying a prayer at the altar. We see the church and hear the bells ringing. There, his daughter prays and asks for victory for her father, and his family arrives at the performance and runs into the hall to take their seats. The fight begins, and the audience watches as the opponents are gradually eliminated, and eventually he has to fight against two opponents at the same time. One opponent grabs him and the other swings a chair at him. At this point, however, our hero in the mystery room presses some kind of button, after which the snail man grows a huge neck like a giraffe and knocks out his opponent with his head. Then the man in the room keeps pushing buttons, and the snail man knocks out all of his opponents. After that, the prisoner in the room starts pushing all the buttons in front of him, and it somehow affects the events going on all over the world. At a huge rock concert, a singer on stage spews flames like a real dragon, and in Russia, a magician named Ivan does a vanishing trick, but he fails. At the same time, in China, a fat man in a white t-shirt suddenly starts barking like a dog. The man in the room sees a beam of light on the floor, lifts his head up, and sees angels circling there. He realizes that this is the way out. The hero begins to climb the buttons like a rock climber, and with each push he changes something in our world. The higher he climbs, the more serious these events become. Accidents, cataclysms, flying to the moon, launching a rocket. At some point, the man realizes that he no longer needs buttons because he can fly. He soars upward like an angel and considers himself almost a god who can control everything in this world. Our hero climbs to the very top and sees a huge lever there, but exactly what this lever does, we are no longer told. Perhaps it could lead to the end of the world. That's all for today. Subscribe and like it if you want more videos like this.